Hello everyone, it is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. And today we're going to be looking at Regice Glaceon Garbodor. It's a really horrendous deck to play against and uh, it's a very powerful locking strategy where you're trying to wall a couple of the more, well, a lot of the format really uh, by stopping EXs with Regice or stopping Evolutions with Glaceon and then anything in between that Basically, non-EX basic Pokemon is the only thing that can really target this deck. I'm going to try and simply hammer spam them so that even then they can't attack us. So uh, the whole emphasis of the deck is to stop your opponent doing pretty much any damage to you at all uh, while you pretty much poke away doing 70 or 80 a turn if you have the Fury Belts on board. So yeah, it's a pretty simple deck. We saw it get to top 8 in Dortmund regionals. Um... And it seems to be a decent contender, um, as long as people are still sleeping on Pokemon Ranger and making it their 61st card that they actually end up cutting for something else, be it a tech card or a consistency card. Um, this deck is still going to be potent, and it's still going to punish a lot of other players. Uh, it's not as simple as people play Ranger, then they automatically beat this deck, because you do have the hammers to fall back on, so that they have to have energy attachment plus this, that, and the other all in their hand at once. So... It creates very awkward moments for the opponent throughout the game, really. And um, we'll have a, little, uh, have a look at the list now and see what else is in here to really cause your opponent a lot of headache. So, here we go. First of all, we have Joint Men Attackers, Regice and Glaceon EX. First of all, with Regice, we have two attacks. The first is Ice Beam. Uh, for one water, one color, so we do 30. Flip a coin if heads the opponent's active is now paralyzed. This is actually a decent attack to bear in mind with this deck. Um, because one of the things that you very much can do against this deck is Sky Return Loop. And um, sometimes you have to almost sack a Regice or be prepared to sack a Regice to get an Ice Beam off and go for the flip of heads. Um, if they're paralyzed, that's great for you. Um, it means then you can deal with the Shaman in the two hit KO as long as they don't have Fury Belt on their Shaman. And um, uh, even if you get Tails. Oftentimes, because we're hammering away the majority of their board, all they do is Sky Return anyway, and they prod for 30. Who really cares about that? So, Regice's first attack is actually a great way around things like Shaman and stuff like that. Additionally, um, Jolteon EX, it's not affected by damage, but it is affected by effects of attacks. So, again, flipping for Paralysis can sometimes change that game completely and make things great for you. Obviously, you have Resistance Blizzard, uh, Blizzard anyway, um, so you could both be doing 0 to 1 another, etc. for a while and see who dead draws first, basically. Bear in mind, we have Flagrants in here, so uh, we should probably win that game. Especially, again, we have Bunnelby. So if it comes to a deck out war, we feel pretty confident against other people trying to wall us. But that Paralysis is definitely an option. However, the main attack, of course, is going to be Resistance Blizzard. For one colourless and two... sorry, one water, two colourless... We're doing 70 base, and during your opponent's next turn, prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon by Pokemon EX. Um, yeah, pretty simple stuff. EX is everywhere. Uh, heavy Mega Decks around in the format, as well as just lots of regular basic EXs around. So um, Regice covers a large portion of the format on his own, uh, so that's really, really excellent for you. Water typing is something of note as well. Something like Volcanion could otherwise be awkward. We of course have Garbodor so that the Baby Volk isn't able to completely run through us on his own. Additionally, because we hit that thing for weakness, we're able to sort of go one-to-one -one combat against it. Um, definitely if the Garbodor's up, I feel favoured. Otherwise, it can sometimes be scary. But yeah, um, the Red Dice is pretty good. The typing is nice. The weakness to Metal is kind of mitigated because um, not all Sizzles will be playing Ranger. Um, but some of them will be, and as soon as they start playing Ranger, they do get through us. Sizzles are actually one of the most difficult matchups for this deck because they can time Mega Turbo and Manual Attachment well, so that we, even if they have a board of zero, they can still, you know, get the attack out of nowhere, incorporate a Ranger, and just deal with us. That's very awkward, so you do have to play very carefully against Sizzle, um, but it doesn't matter that we have Metal Weakness, really, um, because he would one-shot us regardless. I guess the Fury Belt changes things, but um, yeah, it's notable that we're really weak to Scizor, not just because of weakness, but because um, it can recover energy via Mega Turbo and such. Next up we have Glaceon EX. 
Uh, it goes up to 170 HP, which is really nice for a wall in general. Uh, we can go all the way up to 210 with the Fury Belt, so even if there are um, evolved Pokemon out there that can damage us, it's rare that they'll get the one-hit KO in any sort of situation. So even if they are finding things like Ranger, we force them to find multiple counts of this card to get over the Glaceon. Again, it has two attacks. The first one is for Water Colorless. We do 20, plus 10 more for each damage on your opponent's active Pokemon. This is a good attack to bear in mind because you can actually finish games off quicker than your opponent might expect. Uh, they may expect just an extra 80 damage on top of that or something like that for the following turns. But as long as you have gone over halfway, of course, Second Bite will finish them off. So that's pretty decent. Uh, it's something to bear in mind for sure against big tanky EXs. Um, we can, even if they incorporate some forms of healing like Olympia and stuff like that, we can deal with them. Um, eventually, which is pretty cool. But again, it's the second attack, which is uh, why Glaceon is in this deck. Crystal Ray does 70 damage, and during your opponent's next turn, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from evolved Pokemon. Bear in mind, Regice is effects and damage, and Glaceon is just damage. So effects do go through. Um, there aren't many effects that you actually have to really worry about uh, from evolved Pokemon, so don't worry about that too, uh, too much. Uh, but yeah, Crystal Ray is the go-to option against things like Greninja. Um, not too many other evolved Pokemon out there right now uh, that Red Ice can't already cover. So the three count may seem quite high, but because we're playing Ninja Boy anyway, we just want things to start with that aren't Shamely X. And for the matchups where you do need the Glaceon, you want to have multiple. So it seems fine to have a three count in my opinion. It's a pretty decent card, and uh, yeah, it's definitely worth its place in the list. So following on from this, I've already mentioned Volcanion being potentially awkward. That's a big uh, reason for the Garbodor. Vulcan Greninja, the classic two that everyone uh, struggles against, you sort of need the Garbodor. Additionally, uh, Fright Knight could also be an issue. Uh, we could have things stuck in the active position if they have their Fright Knight, because we are focused on float stones, so getting the Garb up is sometimes preferable. Uh, so just the 2-2 two -two line, pretty standard stuff with the Garbodor's ability, shutting off all other abilities if he has a tool attached. Uh, very simple stuff, really. From there, two Shermany X to help us draw cards. You do have to be careful about how many prizes you keep on your board at any one time. You want less than six, uh, so that they can't uh, just like sand around the wall. For example, if Red Ice would be the auto win, uh, don't start putting down lots of Glaceon and Shamans, quite simply. Uh, one thing you can do, however, if you do need to really draw cards, is you can set up and then Ninja Boy into a Regice or uh, a Trubbish or whatever else, so you can effectively clear your board of the Shaman, um, but you still get the use out of it, so that's something to bear in mind, and one reason why Ninja Boy is in here. Um, so yeah, two Shaman, it's still worth putting one or two down for that game, just because um, you need to draw cards, basically, and get out of dead hands and refresh, etc. Finally, we're playing one Bunnelby in here. Bunnelby acts as a really nice card in this deck. Uh, after having a few games with it, I've mentioned things like uh, Shaman looping is a problem, so being able to uh, make sure that you don't deck out is obviously going to be good for you. Bunnelby helps out with that. Um, there's Greninja lists running heavy rough seas now. They've gone away from Faded Town just because of how the format's shaping up. There's more popularity and more focus on things like Yveltal. So um, they're playing rough seas, which means our damage is very pitiful against Greninja. Uh, so having Bunnelby to make sure, again, we don't deck out is important. Um, against Plume Box as well, Bunnelby is going to be nice. So many situations where, because this deck's output is so weak, uh, you like having Bunnelby to make sure you don't deck out. Additionally, you can get back things like Flare Grunts, Hammers, and other awkward cards like that to actually make sure that your opponent doesn't have enough resources to get through all of your prizes for the game. Uh, it's a very awkward card. Uh, for so many reasons, because we have so many troll supporters in here, Bunnelby becomes really cool at getting back these sorts of cards. Additionally, we're not playing Special Charge, so Bunnelby can act as that um, sort of option as well for recycling things. Recycle the Super Rod, recycle DC itself. Uh, it's going to really help out because Jirachi is around right now, and that gets rid of DCs, obviously, which is a pain for this deck because uh, our two main attackers both sort of need DC to be efficient. So... That's something to bear in mind. Bunnelby helps out with a lot of situations. Onto the items now. Uh, we are playing the one-off Super Rod. Already mentioned it. It can recycle energy because we don't have the highest energy count out of any deck. Additionally, we can recycle the important attacker that we need for the game. If Regice is the thing we want, we want to recycle these. 
as well as energy is basically pretty simple stuff. Um, we are playing two enhanced for Crushing Hammer. We're just trying to make sure people can't attack us at any point in the game. Uh, they really help out with that. Um, three Trainers Mail, consistency reasons. Uh, four Ultra, four VS. Again, these are all pretty standard staple cards. Not too many surprises here at all. Onto the supporters, we do have the one of Delinquent. Um, we're trying to win Stadium Wars as well because Parallel City, again, is awkward. It hurts our output again. We don't really like just doing 50 a turn. It turns like three shots on Fury Belted EXs into four shots, and we just don't really like that. So Delinquent's going to be nice for that. Additionally, if people are just Sky Return bouncing, or if at any point in the game you can catch them off guard, you can just get a free win, basically, because you get rid of resources. Oftentimes, if people are sat on two or three card hands, either they've got a dead hand anyway, or they're holding on to like VS Seekers or Sycamores. So Delinquenting those cards away and basically forcing them into top deck mode is really good for this deck. It fits the strategy quite nicely where we're trying to disrupt everything throughout the game. The one of Ninja Boy uh, allowing us, like I said earlier, changing, like you put down a Shaman, then you change it into one of your actual targets can be nice. Um, just getting any Pokemon turning it into a Trubbish is going to be helpful. Um, even sometimes if you've been half damaged by something, uh, you can Ninja Boy out of your active Pokemon to then go into a Trubbish to get KO'd. Uh, that's actually happened to me. It acts as like a switch card. I've tried out Olympia in this deck, and I have gone back to Ninja Boy. Um, I think Ninja Boy is slightly superior because you can force KOs on your own dudes um, as a way of retreating, which doesn't really make much sense, but because you don't mind going down a few prizes because effectively your wall is the thing that wins you the game, um, it's fine to do that. So Ninja Boy is pretty cool for a few options. Obviously, if you start attaching to one of your dudes before you find the other one, Ninja Boy acts as like that search card, just like it would do in Plume Box to um, get into the correct attacker. So that's a cool one-off. We're playing the two-team Flare Grunt, just the theme of the deck, really, along with two Lysander. Lysander going to help stall things even more, and uh, when things have no energy, it's just so much nicer to Lysander things, because then they're paying energy to retreat sometimes, and again, it's ways that we can almost, almost as if we've crushing hammered energy off the board. Uh, via Lysander, so that's pretty cool. Additionally, if anything is getting powered up to start threatening our um, Regices and Glaceons, it's still important to put as much pressure on them damage-wise as possible. Also, Lysandering them into the active, so for future turns we can Flare Grunt them, rather than them just chilling on the bench, powering up. We don't really like that too much, so Lysander is pretty cool. 3N, I like the high count because we are trying to disrupt and uh, we don't take prizes too quickly with this deck, so it's nice and consistent. As well as the full Sycamore, again, just more powerful draw cards, really. Two rough seasons of the stadium, because things like Fright Knight could otherwise be an issue. Obviously, Fright Knight does require three energy, and we're playing a lot of hammers anyway, so it does feel like a bit of a moot point, but uh, the rough seas means that we can uh, be pretty safe against the Fright Knight decks. And I've already mentioned that people will try and Sky Return Bounce, a lot of the time uh, because they have nothing else really. Uh, so having rough seas means that you're not getting damaged even if you're not using your attacks for, for whatever reason. Um, the rough seas is there to back you up as well. Um, then we have the two fighting fury belts to make us that bit more chunky. So now they have to get through either 160 HP in one hit or 210 uh, respectively. So or even if they have Energy to attack, Ranger, they still need to be able to one-hit KO, and it's very difficult with the Fury Belts, so this is a very annoying deck to play around. It is very, very just rude. It's just not nice. So uh, the Fury Belt is cool. Uh, three Floatstone for our freedom of movement. Again, this is a reason why I like the Bunnelby. Three is a fairly low count. Um, you can try out Ninja Boy with Olympia, flip-flop those, see what you think. I'm not fully comfortable with just three float stones because, of course, one automatically goes on to Trubbish, basically. Um, it is important to be able to switch your dudes around. I think that might be a point to improve this deck. Uh, maybe try out four float or something like Olympia could be an option. Uh, but for right now, at least, it's enough to get Garbodor up as well as have a couple of retreat options on your bench. And normally, you have to control your bench quite strictly with this deck and just hope that they don't hit the right combo of cards. Um, it's kind of a YOLO deck at times. Finally, just the 4 DC and the 5 Water Energy. Again, pretty simple stuff, not too much to explain here. Um, we can recycle them with Bunny if need be, so 
we're always going to outhammer other decks if they do have more disruption than us. And we have things like Super Odd and the Bunny to recycle, so it seems pretty good to me. So that is our list, and we will be jumping into the ladder now and forcing some concedes, I would imagine, because this is just not a nice deck to play against. And a lot of decks just simply don't have an answer to it. So let's see how this goes. For the weaknesses, I've already shown that Ranger is a weakness to an extent. Just them having them in the deck is enough of a threat for this deck. Um, it gives people a win condition at times. Additionally, non-EX basics. Things like Rainbow Road, if they can just steamroll you for a couple of turns, if you don't flip too great on hammers, it can start getting quite awkward. So those are things to watch out for, for sure. Additionally, uh, Jirachi promo is an issue. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. But looks like we see the opponent start with Shamini X as well. They get a Floatstone on board. They do have Fire Sleeves, so maybe it's a uh, Volcanian deck. We do see Scorched Earth. That leads me even further to the conclusion that it's Volk. And there is the Volcanian X. So an issue with Volcanian is that they normally play a high escape rope count. So we really have to be careful about this matchup for sure. We really do have to be careful. Garb is a priority, obviously. Getting Fury Belt on Volcanian is again a priority. Sorry, on Reg Ice, so that we stay out of range of a simple escape rope Lysander play. Um, these are the things that we need to bear in mind throughout the game, really. Uh, e Hammer won't be useful this turn, so that's good to know. It can be ultra balled away straight away. No, but from there, it's going to be awkward. Seeing one rope in the discard pile already is great news. <laughs> <coughs> Oftentimes, Vogue players will play 2 to 3, so we do have to keep on our toes, and sometimes they even play Ranger. So, this is not by far, by no means, a very good matchup. Straight away, we do see them retreat into Volcanian. Uh, we do have a Crushing Hammer as well, there's already 3 in their discard pile. Let's go ahead and use a Crushing Hammer. We do get a Tails, that's fine. We're going to Ultra Ball away, Ultra Ball and Enhanced Hammer, because they're not going to be too useful. Uh, Trubbish is very tempting, we only have one in the deck. We do have our Bunnelby, let's see if Super Odd is in here, it definitely is. Prized uh, one end, uh, we have Delinquent, we've prized one Energy, we've prized one Crushing Hammer it looks like. Not too bad, one of our Trubbishes as well is an issue. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab uh, Regice straight away. And I'm going to set up for some cards here. Do have to be careful about the amount of prizes we're giving away, obviously. Um, but for now, we just need to get our board state working nicely. Uh, we do hit energy and delinquent. So this is going to be a turn one delinquent, which is very gross to deal with uh, for any deck. Let's see if we can hit the hammer off first. This time we do get heads. And a delinquent to zero on turn one sounds pretty ugly to me. Um, this could be really good news for us. We sort of need this against a Volcanian player, and uh, there's the heartbreak from the Volcanian. Uh, had to get rid of a VS and one of their energy retrievals. Let's see how they top deck. Uh, is it going to be a high five Sycamore? It's just going to be a Hexmaniac and a pass. Interesting that Volk is actually playing Hexmaniac of their own. Uh, here we're going to attach... I kind of want to attach Water to Shaman. I could just straight away um, attach water to uh, Reg Ice and pass. Obviously, we can't be ending here because it gives them six cards, and we've just delinqu with the uh, delinquent id. Um, I think energy to Reg Ice is kind of safer because if we top at DC, we can sky return anyway, right? Mm. This way, if we top deck DC, we can just retreat. Okay, let's let's go here. Obviously, we could also top deck just regular water energy, but it doesn't affect the game too much right now. There's an energy onto Volk. That's all he really needs to get the first power heater going. Start getting some threatening Pokemon onto their bench now. And we do get DC off the top, so we will be using Sky Return here. Uh, first of all, we do want to use a Crushing Hammer. Does get a Tails. I'm not in too much worry. Uh, we can get a KO here. Uh, 
Alternative is just Sky Return. Sky Return so that I can draw more cards next turn. That's what we're going to do. And I'm actually going to go back into the other Shaman X just to be a little bit safer. Because uh, they could top deck Sycamore and go crazy. Volcanion does have that potential. So we are going to see the Power Heater. Just getting the Volk EX set up. I think that's all the energy in the discard pile onto the field now. And uh, we can Fury Belt, DC to Reg Ice, set up for three cards. We definitely want to start developing Trubbish. Putting down another Reg Ice is kind of tempting because uh, we are in a bit of danger here. Uh, I'm really considering how many prizes we have on our board. That's the only question mark here. Uh, putting Rough Seas into play. We go 80. They heal to 50. Then we do 80 again. So I don't really like Rough Seas just yet. Uh, they have got rid of two stadiums already. So I'm fairly comfortable getting rid of it. I guess if we're if he's just doing no damage back to us anyway. Okay, let's put it in. And we're Sycamore. We know we have the Super Odd, and we know we have our other Garbin deck, so I'm not too worried about that. We do find Trubbish. We do have Floatstone as well, so if I want to be as aggressive as possible, we could just Floatstone and go for the attack here. Alternative is to keep the Floatstone around, obviously, to put onto Trubbish next turn. Then Sycamore hoping to find Garb. Um, I'm not too threatened by this damage, but obviously again that changes if they find things. Hmm. Uh, his two card hand cannot be exactly energy it would have to be energy retreat. No, I can't even see a way that he can KO us this turn. Uh, next turn, I mean. Even with, like... Yeah, I think we're safe to start attacking. I think so. We get N off the prize. The opponent does promote Shaman, as expected, because they want to start drawing cards again, of course. We do say a max elixir. And that hits. And just the sky return. So now if they have exactly a ranger, I'm in a lot of trouble. Um, we need to find Garblor this turn for certain. Alternatives. Delinquent isn't that strong here. Yeah, we've got to dig for Garb. I'm not going to put Bunnelby down. I don't think I need it this game. It's going to be kind of fast paced game I think just because of the damage that both of us have in our decks looks like we definitely do whiff garb which is a problem uh, we can fear about reg ice no even attach and, uh, attachment to back up our reg ice uh, so this is going to be a tense turn for sure however uh, we're just going to go for the 160 damage thanks to weakness Uh, the opponent does go for Steam Up. Maybe that gets him one more card from Shaman. There's the heal from the Rough Seas. And set up for two. Please, no Ranger in the top two cards. They're thinking about something. Maybe they have Lysander. Lysander would be really bad as well. Because of course we prize the Trubbish. Then we'd have to dig hard for Super Odd. See a Floatstone back onto that Shaman X. They could just have a simple draw supporter here. And it looks like it's just an N. I'm very happy with N. <laughs> 
whew, we can have a sigh of relief quickly as we do draw into garb energy and a draw supporter as well so good stuff for us gonna see Volcanian X and an ultra ball as well Going for the Noni X Volcanium. They've used one steam up so far. Uh, they can potentially use another, maybe. They see we see in a single attachment, and just going to be 60, uh, 50 damage with power heater. We can of course heal up a little bit as well. Um, so that's pretty okay in my book. We can uh, DC Regice, put Garb in, and we're going to go ahead and play this N. Looking for a float stone, looks like we whiff. Gonna rough seize up real quick. And go for the resistance blizzard. So our second prize taken. Again, it's us crossing our fingers that they don't steam up plus ranger, because that would be awkward. But now that we've taken up water energy off our prize, I feel a bit more comfortable because we could respond KO. Even Lysander on Garb is pretty horrendous here. We've not been able to pluck Trubbish out of our prizes. And we haven't seen Super just yet either. So, still awkward. Volcanion is always in the game because I don't know what their list is, basically. I don't know if they have Ranger. don't know if they have how many ropes they play, stuff like that. So... We've not seen any Lysanders as of yet either, so a lot of question marks here. They kind of want to have an, an extra attachment this turn to the bench dude, of course, because if they just do an aggro Lysander KO, uh, we can come in and respond on it, and then he's out of attackers, really. But of course, he does play Elixir as well, so anything can happen with Volk, really. Uh, there's the Ninja Boy. Maybe Ninja Boy and Shaman away? I would imagine. Yep, that's going to become a promo Volcanian. And we're going to see an Ultra Ball, so now they can start digging with that Shaman if they want to. Um, but again, we're not scared if Ninja Boy is their supporter. As long as it's not Lysander or Ranger, I'm pretty comfortable with that. We do see an attachment to the Volcanian. And a setup for four cards. There's the fourth Volcanian EX. How many float stones have they been through? We always do have the mill option with this deck as well. Bear that in mind. We see the retreat into Shaman. We see the super rod as well. Putting back the babies and one fire energy. And uh, that means we can rough seas. We can attach. I do kind of just want to Lysander and take two prizes here. Uh, but we don't have that option. <laughs> I thought that was one in the discard pile. Maybe I was uh, thinking of an earlier game or something. Uh, delinquent isn't as good as I would like here. I may still do it though. Uh, I think it's fine to just attack. They need to find like their last float stone or some more ropes to even do damage next turn. Well, I guess they can pay retreat, but then they go back into the damaged Volcanian. So, oh wait, I'm wait, I'm thinking about elixir as well, forgetting that that's an option. Okay, we'll see what they have here. They can attach to Shaman EX. They get another little cheeky rough season. Going to see a VS Seeker for the N. Again, we're not afraid of N. Still haven't found Floatstone all game. It's made it a lot more scary. <laughs> There's Lysandra. There's Baby Volk. I've only seen one elixir so far, they've got to be in the deck somewhere.
Mm. We shall see. We shall see. See the pay retreat into a non damaged Volcanian EX. There is Parallel City. It's going to get rid of Shaman. And maybe she retreated into a different Volcanian. Because this is one with nothing on it. Maybe this one. Yeah, because now he's lost an energy basically. But they just pass. I'm just going to let the two prizes here. Progress the game a little bit. Alternatively, I could just not do that. Because we're still still doing enough to, to hit this Volcanian. Force a switching card out of him. Okay. Let's let's go for that route. And then, because uh, Rufsies is gone now, that damage is staying around for us to, to hit KO as well. Or, well, finish it off, I mean. Do bear in mind that Parallel City is applied before Weakness and Resistance, so 80 goes down to 60, which is then times by 2. Whereas something like a Soul Vest is after. The opponent is playing a Switch instead of a Rope, and I'm sure he's pretty sad about that in this matchup. We see Sycamoring away a Ranger. So, one Ranger and four VS Seeker already in the discard pile. I feel very happy at this point. Uh, that we should be able to take the game quite comfortably. The opponent is also down to a four card deck. They're also choosing to max elixir. They could go down even lower in deck size if they choose to take it, which they do. So we're doing good work on a lot of different fronts here. See the first steam up. Second steam up. Again, I'm not too concerned just because um, we, we know we can tank a hit here, so... Pretty confident. Uh, they start attaching to the Volcanians. We do have Lysander. So that's going to get played. We can now just resist and blizzard for prizes. Uh, nothing else we need to really do here. Finish it off with a 120. Thanks to weakness. Two prizes away. We have the VS Seeker already in hand to finish off the game. There's the Trubbish. We've beaten a uh, Volk without garb all game, which is crazy. Uh, the opponent brings up the free retreater with all the energy. Uh, but yeah, 6 0ing this seems pretty good. Obviously, they can double steam up this turn and get one KO, but that's really as far as it goes. The opponent ends to deck themselves out, so we've guaranteed the win now. <laughs> uh, seems pretty good to me. So that was a Volk playing just one rope, but they did play Ranger as well. Uh, they just never really had it at the right time, so you could see that we made it awkward for him throughout the game. So yeah, that was pretty good stuff. A nice win against Volcanian. Let's go into the ladder again and see what else this deck can come up against and how awkward people find it. That game as well, we did have six prizes on our board, so had things gone a little differently, that could have been very bad for us. Then again, had things gone differently, we could have got Floatstone on Garbodor, so it could have been even safer for us. Oh well, uh, we do win the coin flip, so we'll be going first here. And we lead our favourite starter, which is Trubbish, because we do have Floatstone already in the hand. This is looking pretty good. And we're up against Greninja, and it does play the promo. That's something to bear in mind, because that's a card that most people tech in to help deal with Garbodor. So let's bear that in mind. Going to see some more Frogadiers. Not much else too spectacular there. So taking a few extra mulligans is going to be really helpful for this sort of hand. I want to find a basic Pokemon, and we find Regice. That is ideal. Now our hand is absolutely awesome. This is a disgustingly good turn one hand. This is just so gross. Uh, we're going to Ultra Ball. Find ourselves um, Glaceon, I think. 
because obviously Glaceon is the attacker that we want in this matchup. Alternatively, I could go for Shaman first, and then just draw two cards, and then those two cards I would automatically discard. Hmm. Don't think we really need Fury Belt in this matchup too much. Uh, let's think this through. We have the other Fury Belt. We've actually prized two Glaceon, which is her uh, absolutely horrendous. Um, so I'm definitely going to search it out here. I think I'm just going to attach one energy and pass. Um, obviously retreating the Trubbish because I don't want him to get a free 40 damage on from Aeroblitz. So let's go into the Glaceon. I'm sure I can eventually rough seize off if he starts attacking us next turn. So we'll just pass. Hope to top deck a card that we can discard. Then we can just DC Ultra Ball for Shaman next turn. See a Bursting Balloon onto the Talonflame. And we get hit with an N anyway, so that's fine. Just one Froakie on their bench. I'm sure they want to uh, change that if possible because, yep, there is the Froakie. We do have the option to Lysander if we want it. Lysandering around a balloon does seem like a decent idea. They train his mouth for an end. There is the attachment, so they will be using Aeroblitz here. Now, I have two alternate I have two choices here. I can Lysander KO a Froakie, or I can just end away their Talonflame attack. That means I take 60 from a balloon. Um I think I'm gonna be Lysandering. Pretty sure. Because Froki is still a threat in this matchup. Because it can paralyze us, right? I don't mind if he guarantees the uh, duplicates next turn. We don't need to develop Garbodor just yet, so. Um, I'm tempted to put down second Trubbish Float as well. I think that seems fine. And we're just going to take out Froakie, basically just to avoid the balloon damage more than anything else. It means this turn we take a Froakie, next turn we take a Frogadier. Uh, we're starting to go aggressive on the prize race straight away. Because Greninja can, if it has enough turns, it can beat us. So, And we do also have to be cautious of um, Jirachi promo. That's also something that they could be playing. Which makes this a lot more awkward for us. We do see the town map. They've prized one Frogadier, three of their dive balls as well. Uh, so, good thing they're playing Talonflame to help search out that Frogadier. Otherwise, it might have been difficult. See a Ranger straight away. So, we know they're playing Ranger. That's a problem. And it means they get a cheeky 40 damage in with Aero Blitz. So, amazingly, they didn't go for duplicates. Because it means I can KO the only Frogadier on board. Uh, that's really good stuff. Uh, so whatever they aero blitzed, it wasn't Frogadier energy. That's pretty interesting. I think they may have. I don't. I don't want to say too soon, but I think that really hurts their chances of winning this game. Uh, so we're just gonna Lysander again. I'm tempted to attach the water energy to Glaceon to protect ourselves from. Um, Jirachi a little bit more, but I think still, because we have Ninja Boy, Red Ice is still the play. And also it means that, because uh, we've already used two Float Stones, we can DC Retreat a Reg Ice if they're trying to stall us out. There is our Ninja Boy, which is a nice pickup, uh, but obviously we have both our Glaceon still in the prizes, and that's what we're trying to access right now. See a VS Seeker for Ranger, looks like they're trying to Aero Blitz for the KO. Uh, they are going to hit for 40 and put us down to 50 HP, uh, which isn't great, but I don't mind it too much. Uh, we can end away their hand, look for things like Fury Belt and Rough Seas, and we should be pretty chilled out. Here's a Trainer's Mail for hopefully one of those things. Uh, we may as well use Crushing Hammer. Yeah, we're just going to see the concede. Okay, we made a Greninja concede, and uh, we decked out a Volcanion. Let's see if there's any other decks out there that can take on this awful, awful deck. Both decks we've played against so far have played Ranger 
and it's not mattered too much. Bear in mind that last game was very surprising that they did not duplicate on turn two. They chose to, for some reason, they error blitz and then chose not to. Uh, I don't quite know what was going on there, but still. Uh, it's not the most difficult matchup for our deck. Uh, but that could have been really interesting. I wish that game went a bit longer because I wanted to see the promo Greninja and see how that did in terms of dealing with our garbs. But here we have a mulligan. And we have started with Regice. We have that cheeky little ninja boy in hand as well, if need be. So we'll see what happens here. The opponent taking their time with their mulligan, but here we go. Looks like it's another Volcanian deck. Okay, we're going to Ultra Ball. Going to get rid of Lysander and Water Energy here. And we're going to go for Shaman. I'm going to attach and then I'm going to Ninja Boy the Shaman into a Trubbish. Set up for three cards. Hopefully just DC Supporter is the dream. Uh, not too much, we can hold everything for now. Uh, we'll just Ninja Boy this turn. Turn into a Trubbish. Floatstone that real quick. And there's nothing else I really want to do this turn. Uh, so we'll just pass. Cross our fingers that they can't get a crazy turn one, which involves like escape rope and steam ups on their baby Volk, that would be a disaster because they could deal with the Trubbish very early on. Again, it's the question we have to play. How many ropes are Volks playing? How many, if at all, any Rangers are they playing? Uh, these are the real questions that we have to be concerned about when playing this deck. Um, but let's see what happens. We're going to see the Ultra Ball. Going to get rid of Ranger, so there's answer number one. They are playing Ranger. Uh oh. Uh, there's the Baby Volk. And there's a Max Elixir, which does hit. Second Max Elixir. If they get a turn one Steam Artillery KO, I'm out. Uh oh. Oh my goodness. Floatstone steam up. That's all they need. Oh, turn one rope. That's so gross. That's so gross. <laughs> oh, well, we've got a comeback on here, boys. The Fury Belt as well, so it can survive next turn. That could not have gone better for Volk. Could not have gone better. Ah. <sighs> Trainers now save me. Sycamore's pretty good. Uh, I kind of want to put Glaceon down just for safety here. Uh, we're going to Sycamore this hand. Oh, whiffing DC. Yep, 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 yep. That sounds just about right at this point. Tails as well. Okay. Let's just rub salt in, I guess. Uh, we'll hold the Super Rod, because I don't really want to top deck any of those cards, if I'm going to Sycamore anyway. Um, oh, getting rid of another Floatstone is also painful. Uh, gross. Okay. I think we just have to pass. Yep. Hmm. Well, that was an explosive turn from Volk. Which is not great. There's a steam up. So now they're KOing this Regice. See an attachment. 
throw it onto that guy as well, sure, why not? And there's steam artillery. So if we're getting rid of the floatstone anyway, I may as well go Glaceon here, right? I could always Ninja Boy Glaceon into Trubbish. Uh, picking up Sycamore. We're going to rod back in our Pokemon. Rough Seas can come in. And we'll Sycamore here. Oh, goodness me. Well, we got a flip at least. It's even worth attaching energy here. Let's train as well, hoping for Ultra Ball for Shaman. There's Ultra Ball. Is DC is Shaman even good here? He's already at four prizes. Maybe just find Trubbish. And attach an energy to Glaceon, I guess. Force him maybe into the EX to get a KO. This is pretty grim though. He's had a couple of turns of very good aggression, whereas we've not been able to keep up at all. There's the attachment onto the baby. Trainer's mail as well. There's some more Max Elixir. Goes onto the EX. Now the baby gets benched and Shaman for three. Second escape rope is so grim. Uh, problems are being had. Has to be Trubbish. Can't win the game if Red Ice goes down. Ah, uh, gross. This is why Volk is a worry. <laughs> Back into the uh, other Volk. We still see a Steam Up, so we can get some attachments going, I imagine. And uh, there's Steam Artillery. Down to three prizes already. And we've not even attacked him yet. So, all we can do is Sycamore. Gotta find DC this turn, otherwise it's pointless. Well, pointless comes to mind. We can Fury Belt. We can Float Trub. We can Ultra Ball for more cards. Well, there's DCE. Uh, so we're doing 80 to 160, right? That's it's, that's not what we need. We need 170. Okay, so we're going for paralysis flips, I think, is our only way to win now. Well, we actually flipped ahead for once. Back in the game? Question mark? <laughs> they do play Olympia, though, so I'm not that hopeful. Trainer's mouth for Lysander. There's energy retrieval. Two cards. There's the manual attachment to the Volk EX. Steam up. Floatstone onto the Shaman. Fisherman is the supporter, which I'm happy with. 
gets two more fires into the hand. And a pass. We did it, guys. We got ourselves back into this game. We're not going to win, but we're back in the game. We're also very close to deck out, just saying. Right, let's end. Now let's play Dodge the VS Seeker. That's the, that's the game we've got to play now. Resistance Blizzard. Garb is up. Floatstone's on. So Ranger will not KO us. It's more that we have to watch out for Lysander to deal with Garb and or just Plurize Race in general. Where he can just KO Shaman. I think he still goes Garb first, right? If he has Lysander, he always goes Garb first. But then we try and hit him with another N. And crawl back into this game. There's Lysander. He actually goes for the Shaman first. I think that's way weaker for him. Because now he's N to 1. So a window of opportunity, maybe? Maybe. Just maybe. We'll play this Crushing Hammer. Okay. So now he needs exactly Energy VS Seeker. Off the N to 1 plus dot tech. We'll attach DC to Glaceon. Let's do it. Let's cross our fingers. Back in the game. Back in the game. <laughs> Rough seas. Elixir. It does hit. Bulky X. A lot less scary. We'll just take the KO here. Have to be careful about how many cards we're playing. Don't want to deck ourselves out. And I hope we haven't lagged out here. Okay, there we go. There we go. Cool. Because this is close. N and pray, boys and girls. N and pray. There's the retreat. Just 20? Yeah, just 20. 20 is fine. We can live with 20. Especially because we can do that. We're getting there. We are getting there. In comes the other baby bulk. It has floatstone, of course. There's the Parallel City. And Power Heater. So we're low on deck. Um, I'm thinking about VS Seeking just like Sander here to try and win in two turns. Um, I think that's our route to victory here. Other consideration was to link with the one card hand, but I think we'll just accelerate the game as best as possible here. We're at 140 HP, so they need to have like three fear about in their deck, which I don't think they do. Or just energy, Lysander still wins the game, obviously, but... Trainer's Mail, ugh. 
This is close. There's Sycamore. Sycamore isn't Lysander. Fact. <laughs> and uh, they do play Sycamore. Oh boy. Energy. Rope doesn't win in the game. I think we've got him. You might have to pay retreat here. Yep. Okay. Another Volk. Get here for 20. That's a really scary number because now we're in range of the EXs. How many water energy have we gone through? Three. So we'll start putting this down, this down. Resistance Blizzard. Very close game. There's an attachment. There's an ultra ball. There's Hooper. Energy retrieval as well. Just for some deck thinning, I imagine. Oh man, okay. So we KO N, and again, it's just praying that no Ranger. Ugh, scary times. Is there any alternative here? We could retreat KO with. Glaceon, then he guarantees 130 damage. Do I care about 130? Yes, I do. Um, I think we have to roll the dice. Let's do it. Cross your fingers. Water energy blocks. Ugh, flare grunt. That's not bad actually. Mm. Trainer's mail. Oh no. BSC for game. There it is. There it is. Very close game. I'm surprised we brought it as close as we did after such a crazy start, but uh, not quite enough to win out the game. I think there, if we're able to access our last water energy, I don't know if it was it was either our last prize or our last card in deck. Either way, unfortunate, um, because that way I could have retreated. We had our other fury belt, so I could have gone into red ice. I guess he always likes Sanders anyway. But yeah, okay, well. One win to a Volk, one loss to a Volk that had a ridiculous turn. If you go back and watch that turn one, I think everyone has already written me off in that matchup, but we took it close. I think I'm pretty still content with that. Um, and then we also had a Greninja concede to us quite quickly. So that's the deck, guys. Um, you're going to have to see some other matchups. Volk is actually one of the hardest ones out there because of the amount of rope and ranger that they obviously do play. Um, other things don't play that many. Um, ropes and they sometimes don't even play ranger a lot of lists are making it their 61st card and uh, it's a little bit greedy right now and this deck is all about punishing those people and uh yeah let me know what you guys think about this deck would it show up for london is it a good enough contender or are people going to stay safe and just play ranger um, i'd love to hear your thoughts if you are going to london let me know if you're going to be playing ranger or not and is it because of you fear you fearing this deck really uh, I'd love to hear your discussion down below. Like the video if you did, and subscribe to the channel if you've not already. For now, though, it has been Joe from Omnipoke, and I will see you guys next time.